with you again. It's actually been quite a while and I really did miss every one of you out there. I hope you're well. I hope you're keeping safe. We're still in the midst of the much dreaded COVID-19 pandemic and please stay safe, follow all the guidelines and by the grace of God, this will soon be over. Now, back in the days when we were in school, there were this group of students or learners who were very intelligent as perceived by classmates and teachers. They could answer questions quickly in class. Uh, they performed very well in summative uh, formative tests and they were the teacher's delight. And there were this other group of learners who struggled basically with almost everything. They couldn't read like their classmates. They couldn't spell well. Uh, their grades were not good enough. And um, they were given names, you know, by the teachers. Some teachers in some climes will call them Oludu. If you're from the West, you know what that means. Uh, Dokwemu. Some will call them idiots. Some will call them Mumu. And to the extent of even asking uh, their classmates to sing songs and jeer at them, you know, and this uh, is quite unfortunate because now we've come to know that some of these uh, struggles they had were due to no fault of theirs, but were due to um, the structure, the uh, anatomy of their brains, the difference in the structure, in the organization, and in the functions of your brains. And this group of learners who have these difficulties are known as dyslexics. And today, that is the subject of our discussion. Actually, this video was prompted by a fa the fact that we are currently um, recruiting subjects for a research that we are going to carry out on uh, dyslexia. This research is aimed at investigating the effects of the Fast Forward program a program designed based on years of uh, research in neurology that's aimed at rewiring the brain and aimed at uh, alleviating some of the symptoms caused by dyslexia and other learning disorders and improving learning outcomes for dyslexics and people who struggle with learning. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I'd like you to stay tuned and watch this short video clip on Fast Forward and after that, I'll be back to tell you more about the research and to inform you, to give you, create some awareness on dyslexia, to answer some questions that might have been bothering your mind about dyslexia. Please don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. And if you haven't subscribed to the Psychologist NGTV yet, please do so. It will cost you nothing. It will put smiles on my face and will motivate me to carry out even more research and to provide you with more information that will help you live fulfilled. So please watch this video clip and I'll be back with you shortly. Today's classroom is more academically diverse than ever. And even though schools offer a variety of programs and resources, some learners continue to perform below grade level. So how can teachers accelerate learning for every student? It all starts with the brain. With help, students can strengthen foundational learning pathways in the brain, dramatically increasing their capacity to learn. That's exactly what Fast Forward does, quickly transforming students into better learners across all areas of study. Learners who can absorb information faster, pay closer attention, and remember more of what they are taught. That's because Fast Forward develops not only reading and language skills, but also the cognitive skills of memory, attention, processing, and sequencing that are key to learning. No other program for K-12 learners develops all these skills at the same time. It's a targeted workout for the brain. Fast Forward sets each student on a differentiated learning path based on age and assessment results. Then it keeps on adapting to the learner with every click of the mouse. Graphical reports let teachers see how their students are progressing and quickly pinpoint those who need extra help. At the same time, district administrators can easily see student gains at each school and district-wide. Does Fast Forward really work? An independent study commissioned by the Nevada Department of Education evaluated 24 widely used educational programs and rated Fast Forward as having the highest impact of all. See for yourself why thousands of schools are using Fast Forward as a cost-effective way to accelerate student learning. Try a demo today. 
Okay, so like I said, if you have a child that is dyslexic, uh, diagnosed dyslexic, or a child that's struggling with spelling, uh, with reading, uh, with word recognition, with phonetics, phonological awareness, phonemics awareness, and all of these related abilities, and a child that's performing below uh, his classmates and age mates, uh, in spite of being given adequate instructions, please click on the link in this video. The link will also be provided in my bio to enroll that child for the... Like I said, research is very likely to improve learning outcomes for your work. There's over 250 research uh, studies, including studies carried out in um, Harvard University and the likes, proving the efficacy of the Fast Forward program in improving learning outcomes for individuals um, suffering from dyslexia and other learning disabilities, as well as other individuals. Uh, but this is the first uh, research of its kind in Africa. So uh, award your word the privilege of being a part of this research. Click on the form, click on the link, fill the form for your word, and uh, we'll get back to you. So now back to uh, the topic of today. What is dyslexia? Now dyslexia is a specific learning disorder that results from the fact that the brain of dyslexics, people who have dyslexia, is different in its anatomy, in its organization and function from the brains of other individuals who do not have dyslexia. Leading, and there is a deficiency in the phonological loop of the brain of dyslexics, leading to uh, struggles with uh, phonetics, that is identifying letters and associating letters with the sounds they make, with phonemic awareness, being able to learn the smallest unit of sounds in the language that they speak and being able to blend the sounds, phonological awareness that has to do with um, learning the sound structure of the language they speak, um, rhyming words, uh, dealing with alliterations, being able to break words into syllables, being able, being able to know the number of words in a sentence and such abilities. So they struggle with these abilities uh, because of the difference or the, in the difference the way their brain is wired. And as a matter of fact, dyslexia does not end with these learning abilities. As dyslexics have often said, it affects every aspect of their lives, motor coordination, um, organization, time awareness, and there are also other uh, symptoms or effects of dyslexia on the lives of dyslexics. So we'll move on quickly to the next question. What are the symptoms, the signs, or the characteristics of dyslexia? Now, first of all, it's important for you to note that there are actually very many characteristics of dyslexia. The characteristics of dyslexia occur on a continuum, and um, no one dyslexic will suffer all or will have all of these characteristics. You know, so every individual's experience of dyslexia is specific to that individual, you know, and some of these characteristics, other individuals who are not dyslexic also have them, but the difference is that a dyslexic uh, might or should have at least 10 of these many characteristics. Now, so let's take a look at the characteristics of dyslexia. The first one is they have a deficiency in their short-term memory, their working memory. Now, if so if you're conversant with uh, the working of the memory system of um, humans, you will know that we have three levels of memory, uh, the sensory register, the short-term memory, and the long-term memory. So the sensory register is the part of our memory that collects um, sensory information from the environment, uh, pictures, the audio uh, messages, and all of that. And this sensory information they are temporal, temporarily stored in the short-term memory where they are processed for transformation or translation into the long-term memory for long-term storage. Now, for normal individuals, the short-term memory is limited in capacity. Uh, usually we say it's 5 plus or minus 2 in its capacity. That is to say there's a limited number of information that the short-term memory can store and also a limited time frame with which it can store the information which if you do not process the information after that time, 
the information gets replaced by other information and does not get stored in the long-term memory. So what I just said is that normal individuals who are not dyslexics are have a limited short-term memory in its time and capacity. Now, the short-term memory of dyslexics is even more limited. Yes, that means they have a shorter duration for storage and a shorter, a, a more limited capacity. So you can imagine their struggles are more. They can't hold on to information for long periods and the number of information they can store for processing is actually limited. So they have struggles. They also have struggles with visual processing, picture information, how they process visual sensory information. Uh, and you know that much of the information we get from environments is in visual forms in class. They have to see and they have a problem with visual processing. Now they have a problem with time management. Yeah, they have a problem with motor coordination. Okay? So Dyslexics have a problem with sequencing, learning about sequencing, okay? Uh, days of the week, the different months, and even the sequence, number sequence, they have a problem and they struggle with these abilities. Now, all of the phonological abilities that we require for being able to read, being able to spell, recognize words, they have a problem with it. I already mentioned them before. Uh, phonological awareness. They can't uh, understand the sound structure of the language they speak. They have problems with rhyming words, road learning, memorizing things, uh, you know, reproducing information. They have a problem with that. Uh, they have a problem with um, syllables, breaking words into syllables, knowing the amount of words in a, a sentence, alliterations, and all of that. They have a problem with phonemic awareness. But the smallest unit of sound, you know, is called phoneme, and they are not able to learn this. They are not able to blend sounds, and that's why they are not able to read and spell as easily as we can do. They have a problem with phonetics, recognizing the structure of letters, and being able to know how each letter sounds, being able to associate the sound of the letter with the letter, they have problems with this. So you can imagine what they have to deal with. And so it's difficult for them to learn to read. They struggle with spellings. And you know, if you have difficulties reading, then you basically are going to have uh, difficulties learning because for you to answer questions in almost uh, any examination, you have to learn to read first, read instructions and all of that. So these are some of the things that uh, dyslexics have to deal with. Now, these are uh, phonological uh, deficiencies. How it translates when they're right is that dyslexics will usually reverse letters, D for B. So where there's dog, they're likely to read bog or write bog. They'll also reverse words, pit for tip. Dyslexics will transpose words, okay? Brag for grab, left for felt. Okay, they'll also invert letters when they're writing. So where there's a U, they'll place an N. Where there's a W, they'll place an M. Okay, these ladies will do that. And they'll have problems reading very small words. And sometimes you wonder, uh, O, O, H, um, at, to. They have problems with reading those kind of small words. And sometimes they omit these words, you know. So these are kind of the things, that's one of the ways you will see dyslexia manifesting if you're dealing with a dyslexic in the classroom and for, at some age you know all of this reversing of uh, numbers and uh, uh, letters and words might be usual at a certain age you know but um, when they get beyond the age of learning to write two three and so it may not be so normal for them to do these transpositions and inversions and replacing or reversing that we just spoke about dyslexics may also have problem with number calculations okay and um, Sometimes it's associated with dysgraphia, which is a problem with handwriting uh, and all of that. Some other attention deficits come with it because uh, they have to spend a lot of energy in trying to read and process information. Uh, that leads them to being fatigued easily. So they have to deal with fatigue. They get easily tired more than other people. Now, one very interesting characteristic or characteristic of dyslexia is the Miss Ellen syndrome. This syndrome is caused by uh, a sharp visual contrast, such as uh, black words on white paper. This makes uh, them to have like, uh, this, there's this visual glare from the paper that causes them distress. Uh, and then it also distorts the words on the paper so that they can sometimes see the words on the paper swelling around. Sometimes they see the words on the paper running off the paper 
or running after each other. I mean, you, you're thinking about this and thinking, is this even possible at all? But yes, this is how or what they see sometimes when they try to read. And this causes them a lot of distress and so causes them fatigue. So uh, dyslexics are always fatigued whilst trying to read because they have to uh, expend a lot of energy trying to concentrate on what they're reading. First of all, they are trying to process all of this information. They have uh, a limited capacity uh, of their short-term memory. And then they have to deal with the white glare and with all of the distortion of the, the words on the paper. So there's a lot of, they have problem with concentration and they experience a lot of fatigue while trying to learn, you know. Dyslexics will also substitute words such as replacing house for home. And you're wondering, I mean, how can this be? The words are spelled and pronounced differently. But they'll substitute words like that. Generally, dyslexics will learn to read later than uh, other members or other people of their age group in spite of adequate instruction, like we mentioned before. And they will acquire vocabulary with greater difficulty. So you might have um, a disparity between their age and the vocabulary they use. So they may not use age-appropriate vocabulary. Also because of the problems with uh, concentration and fatigue, they are easily distracted by visual and auditory stimuli. So they are easily distracted. That's why they sometimes have attention deficits. Dyslexics may have difficulty following directions, and they may also have confusion between the words before and after, and between locating the left from the right. Uh, like I said before, some of these characteristics are also exhibited by other non dyslexics Me, for instance, I usually have a problem identifying my left from my right. So when I'm driving and you say go left, sometimes you might see me trying to go right until I go back to primary school days and do left, right, like I'm trying to get into a match pass and then I'll be able to identify my left from my right. So but these days, some these days will have difficulty identifying their left from their right. Now, so these are some of the primary difficulties these days will experience. Like I said, these uh, difficulties are not limited to that. It affects every aspect of their lives, organization, time management, and then there are also the secondary uh, symptoms or signs or uh, characteristics such as low self-esteem like I said instead of offering them the support and the help that they need some people will jeer at them and call them names and this definitely will affect their self-esteem so they may have low self-esteem they may lack self-confidence uh, the stress from all of this trying to do schoolwork putting in efforts but not getting a uh, commiserate uh, results you know so they may struggle with that and um, a whole lot of psychological uh, issues could result from that. That's why we need to show them support and love and not uh, criticism or uh, mockery and all of that. These are some of the secondary characteristics of dyslexia. Anxiety, stress, uh, fatigue, uh, frustration, sometimes panic. Uh, some of them are very jittery whenever you ask them to read, you know, so they always experience panics when they're asked to read. And all of that. So over to our next question. What causes dyslexia? Okay, because dyslexia runs in families, there's been, um, it's been linked with a genetic uh, cause, okay? So dyslexia is thought to be hereditary. That means uh, it's likely that children will inherit or have inherited dyslexia from their parents through the genes, okay? Now, some people think that not all types of dyslexia are developmental. Uh, uh, in childhood, so accidents, some kind of accidents could also cause dyslexia, okay? And then switching of handedness from left hand to right hand or right hand to left hand, as we discussed in one of our previous videos, have also been linked with causing dyslexia. And uh, even though I may not tell you categorically that switching handedness can cause dyslexia, what I can tell you is that switching handedness can make your child or your word to experience, to experience uh, some symptoms, or several symptoms that uh, are also experienced by dyslexics. So you don't even want to get into that. Let the child use whichever hand he or she is comfortable using. Don't switch your child from either the left hand to the right hand or vice versa. In fact, there's a research by Brandler and Prior China 2014 that's linked handedness, uh, brain asymmetry with some neuro... Uh, developmental disorders like schizophrenia and uh, dyslexia. So this is not a meme. So please stay away from trying to switch children's um, handedness. Okay. So we like we said, the cause is neurological. Their brain anatomy 
uh, function and organization is different uh, from the brain of other people. The wiring of their brain is different from the way uh, the brain of other non dyslexics is wired. So that's what co causes all of these characteristics that we've mentioned. Okay, so it's through no fault of theirs, like we've said before. So our next question is how is dyslexia diagnosed? <clears throat> now, um, dyslexia evaluation actually involves a lot of different components. Uh, whoever is doing the diagnosis, we should actually be an expert, uh, a, a, a psychologist, um, a special education expert or an educational psychologist, uh, or <clears throat> it, it can also be done using a magnetic resonance imaging. Only if the MRI is done at certain times. So whilst um, a dyslexic is writing or reading, whilst he's still having difficulties, if an MRI is done, it can reveal that he's dyslexic. But if the dyslexic has developed some compensations, because usually, even without any help, some dyslexics develop enough compensations to be able to deal with their learning by themselves and excel in the academics by themselves. So if they develop sufficient uh, compensation, you might not see the difference in their brain by magnetic resonance imaging. That's what some researchers have said. But there are a lot of a wider range of battery uh, uh, diagnostic tests that can detect dyslexia and that can be administered by educational psychologists. So like I said, it's an evalu evaluation that would involve taking the child's history, um, learning history, taking the child's biological history, and then also learning about some other um, activities uh, that the child carries out at home because the characteristics of dyslexia are not limited to the learning disabilities that like we said. It involves coordination, it involves um, uh, motor movements, it involves being able to organize your environment, and there are also other secondary characteristics that if you've experienced some of these characteristics in your child, and there's a marked discrepancy between your child's performance and the expected performance for your child's age group, okay, and uh, in spite of adequate instruction. So if you have a child suffering from all of this, suffering with learning, in spite of instruction, and then that is discrepancy uh, between what is expected for a child of their age, please do yourself a favor. If your child is between 5 to 12 years old, resides in Nigeria or Ghana, and is enrolled in the primary school, please enroll your child for this research. It is likely to do your child more good, you know, help your child deal with uh, dyslexia. Actually, your brain is plastic and uh, it can be rewired and it is believed that the fast forward program will be able to rewire to at least to a certain degree the brains of your words. So please do yourself a favor, enroll your child for this research. We'll be happy to have you. Uh, one other question that has often been asked by people is, does dyslexia mean uh, a low IQ? No, it doesn't. It actually believes that uh, the intelligent quotient of dyslexics is actually normal, or at least above average. So there's no relationship between their IQ and their experience of dyslexia. So it's not actually an intelligent issue, uh, but it's just a problem of them being able to, like most of them will tell you that they know what they want to say, they know what they want to write, but the problem is actually saying or writing what they want to say. And so it's not an IQ problem. They're actually of normal intelligence, okay? So it's not that they have low IQs, some people have also asked, will my child outgrow the dyslexia? Your child is not likely to outgrow dyslexia. It's a lifetime um, disorder. However, like I mentioned before, your child might be able to develop compensations uh, that will help your child deal with life, be able to go through schooling, get a degree like every other person, and you know live a normal life, especially if the dyslexia is diagnosed early enough and the child is given specialized specialized and individualized instruction, the child is likely to be able to overcome all of the difficulties with learning and to carry on and progress normally with his learning. Some people have also asked if it's late, if it's ever too late to get help for their word. No, it's never too late to get help for your word. However, the earlier, the better. So if you have noticed anything, please start now to try to seek for help for your word. Now, what are the things, some of the things we can do to help a dyslexic in the classroom, like I said, individualized uh, instruction from trained teachers. There are people who are specifically trained to 
be able to have this LASIK still with these symptoms. Unfortunately, we don't have too many of them in Nigeria, but what we are hoping is that in the nearest future, there will be centers that can provide specialized uh, instructions for this LASIK. In the meantime, classroom teachers, if you find out that your child, your learner is dyslexic, you can have accommodations, giving your child extra time, you know, to deal with tests and questions, being patient with the learner, you know, making sure that you use multimedia instruction, that means provide visuals, provide uh, objects that they can manipulate, make sure that they have diverse materials, you know, uh, videos for them to watch, to learn from, uh, and then, uh, you know, there are other, so many ways you can help. Just be patient with the child and make sure that the child sometimes is in a better position to communicate their individual needs to you. Like I said, their experience of dyslexia is individual and they can communicate with you their needs and please help them meet those needs and learn better. May I not forget to mention in this video that there's also a good side to being dyslexic. Yeah, uh, dyslexic, uh, dyslexia has been um, correlated with creativity. This is because there are a number of individuals out there who are uh, very creative. There are a number of dyslexics who are really thriving in uh, the creativity industry. So your child might thrive with uh, attention. If you pay sufficient attention to the child's creativity skills, you might find the child thriving in creativity. And then um, dyslexics are also, also taught to be good with 3D, three-dimension thinking. You know, so there, your child might do good with that visual spatial skills, your child might fare well with visual spatial skills, your child might be a divergent thinker, your child might be able to uh, have a global view to things, might be innovative in certain aspects, and being able to see the global picture, the big picture of things, and proper solutions to problems, and see things in perspective that other people cannot see. So there's also a good side of dyslexia. Some of us who might be above the primary school age who are dealing uh, with dyslexia, uh, like I said, I'm going to do a video soon on good study habits. I'm sure that even dyslexics will find this really helpful. And But this is where we're going to stop for today. I hope that I've been able to increase your information about dyslexia. And I want to remind us that if you have a child that's suffering from dyslexia, maybe uh, a neighbor, uh, a student, uh, a client, please click on the link in my bio to enroll the child for this uh, novel and uh, uh, historic research on dyslexia. Please share this video to friends who might need it, who might find it useful. Uh, and then please don't forget to subscribe to The Psychologist NGTV. Help us grow, help us serve you better. It's been an awesome time with you, like always, and I'm so delighted to be able to do this. I hope that as time goes on, I'm going to be able to provide information and answers that will help us live better and achieve more. And so from me to you today, have a lovely day and stay safe out there. Bye. Love you.